Yeah, so um, obviously my name's Keith Potts and uh, I work for a company called Action Coach, which is uh, the largest business coaching company in the world, as they all like to say, with uh, offices in 84 countries. So um, I am the uh, local territory manager for, um, for them here in uh, West Tennessee. And um, one of the things that I like to do is interview local business owners, uh, get to know them a little bit, and let them talk about their business and how they got started um, and put that in the newsletter that I send out each month and also post them on our social media platforms and YouTube platforms. So hopefully give you guys uh, some extra publicity and an opportunity to speak about your brand and your products and services um, to uh, our audience. Uh, we mail out to about 5,000 people. So uh, it's a pretty decent sized database. Okay. So, um, I've been working for Action Coach um, since the beginning of the year. Um, I have um, way too many decades in business. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I've been uh, entrepreneurial most of my life. Um, I got approached by Action Coach to um, work with them in a new program that they're doing. Um, and uh, I felt like it was a great opportunity to give back to local businesses and uh, hopefully use some of my experience on both the good and the bad side um, and be able to help uh, business owners locally here navigate the good times and the difficult times, but most importantly, help them realize uh, their original dreams when they started a business. Okay, okay. Um, well, I, I do understand that. I it's been years for me too out there with that that dreaming. <laughs> yes. I think it's been a few nightmares mixed with after the dream. So that oh, I that. absolutely. I guess it makes you a rounded character if you have the nightmares too. <laughs> Man, what you said, what you said. Yeah, I, just, I mean it's it, it, it's interesting just because you know most you know people start a business um, whatever that niche that they're in full of passion for the product or the service that they're providing and you know the business background is not necessarily great and right. so you know they, they get so engrossed in the business and the day-to-day -day that they lose sight of why they started the business in the first place and and for a lot of people it just becomes uh, a paycheck right and, well you're working, or, you're working for the business, you know, <laughs> you're working for the business rather than the business working for you. Right. Been and, there, done that one. Yeah. I, I think it's just, it's just, it's just interesting. And um, if somebody from the outside, like myself, you know, if, is talking to you and encouraging you and coaching you, um, you can get an awful lot closer to back to the original ideas of why you started. Well, you know, I've been in the music business all my life, and I guess it just transitioned to what it, what I have become today in doing voiceovers and doing commercials and TV commercials and TV voiceover commercials. And, you know, it just it, it ballooned over the years as you saw how society changed, how the, the new generation stepped in and just took over certain things in the music industry. So it made us have to, the old cats, the veterans, we had to <laughs> change, change momentum. That's and, right. And do yeah. more things, you know, than we used to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, you have to, you have to adapt. Yeah. Um, and that's exactly what it was. Yeah. That's exactly what it was. Adapting to the situation. Yeah. The, you know, up, me, media technology, because, you know, when you pass 50, 50s over 50 and stuff is like yeah. keeping up with the new technology how it changes the new trends and yeah. how it how to compete right you know, it's uh it's uh it can get hectic but uh i've learned to be patient and let the business come to me sometimes and sometimes i may have to go out and get it but sometimes i'll just let it come to me you know and, and sometimes it works better when it just come to you right you, you know because of what you also, the quality of your work or the quality of what you do or something that a, a customer or a person or client would, 
you know, needs. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so they they come back, you know, yeah. after they realize that you can do the job, you know, you get a repeat, you get a few repeats, you know, over the years. Right. You know, they might not come back every year, but they come back, you know. Oh. And it, it, it's so it, when you transitioned into doing the voiceovers, uh, was that something that you planned to do or did you just sort of transition sort of by accident into that based on your, on obviously yeah. you've great, you've obviously got a great voice and great vocal. And in, uh, in a, as a necessity, you know, uh, wanted to start the radio station and didn't have the, I'm not a DJ. So I figured if I could use my voice because that's what the DJing is mainly in radio, is having that, that, visible, that invisible image, but yeah. the voice has to have the quality. Right. So it made me realize that if I did my, if I uh, came up with some ideas with uh, doing as a DJ, uh, uh, doing a radio show, doing my own radio show, and then I got my daughter to drop, some, do, some, do the same, and got someone else to do the same, and it just jailed into the radio station. Right. You know? Well, it's an offline radio, but if you got my app, I don't care where you are in the world or in the country, you can hear my you know, my radio station, you know. So it's uh, it was just something that I guess I did fall into it. In right. a way, you know? <laughs> yeah, but but it sounds like you use the the internet and the trend towards internet radio um, to really establish a, a a new brand for yourself and a new business for yourself. That's what it was. That's yeah. exactly what it was. And then yeah. staying in the, staying in the, how can I say it? Yo hit. So I'm not going to have much competition on, on, on trademark value right. in that area. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so once you can conquer the trademark value, you know, and, and, and keep it, keep the brand quality, you know, uh, people get used to it. I mean, you know, it's just being consistent. And I think that's what I've been able to do over the years is just be continually consistent with what I do yeah. and not uh, not change anything that, sure. that, you know, because people have a tendency when you change something, they disappear. Right. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah but now my analytics sometimes be up and down, which I guess that's what everybody, you know, you may have a good week or a good month and then next month it might not be so good, you know. Yeah. So is your is your um, audience majority local, or is have you managed to go worldwide or nationwide? My my audience is worldwide, cool, and nationwide. Yeah, that's been the biggest. That's been the help for me because locally I'm not identified. I I, I didn't want to be identified. This is my home, so I kind of treat it. I, I I am known here, and I do do some projects here, but I'm not. Uh, I'm not a standout in this system because sure. I figured uh, it would be best for me to be behind the scenes and stay behind the scenes and yeah. stay where where I'm due, you know, where right. put other faces out there in front of me. Right, also. exactly. Yeah. And yeah. that's what I've been able to do is to put the other faces out in front of me and uh, maintain what I do behind the scenes, you know. Yeah. I think local radio, um, local media, specifically radio since we're talking music and radio um became so narrow uh, yes that people started going out and looking for um alternatives and the internet enabled entrepreneurs and music lovers like yourself to be able to start things that attract a certain type of audience because there's only so many times you can listen to you know, if you listen to one of the uh, sort of the regular oldie stations, it's the same forty songs. Yeah, you know? it's like you've got forty years worth of music. Can we not vary it a little bit? Um, but they, they they target a specific niche, and and you know I, I'm I'm fairly eclectic in my musical taste. Um, right, right. And listening to a radio station, there's only so many times I can hear the Ed, latest Ed Sheeran song. Um, so you, you go out hunting for radio stations or music stations that um, give that sort of a variety for you. Well, I try to pick the artists artists that haven't had had haven't had such a big journey in life to where they're above 
uh, working for for what it, they have to work for. Well, okay. You know, and if you give it, if I give them, I give them an opportunity to get on my network and be a member of the network by uh, offering them uh, a thirty second commercial for their product or their for their music, offering mm -hmm. them a, a video content if they if they need it. And, uh, offering them uh, um, licensing uh, co consultation and, and yeah. offering them all different types of things that they need that they don't have. Yeah. And a lot of them, they have websites that don't know how to manage them. So yeah. they need someone to even do that. You know, they, yeah. and they invest their money in a lot of things that they really don't need. Right. They, they, they're not, they don't understand the music business. It, they, you know, they, a lot of them do it for hobby, uh, do it on the sideline. And, but uh, in my case, I built a, I've generated a, a following from A&R people from different major record labels, attorneys, different managers, different concert promoters, different people around the country who come to my site. And if you go to it now, you'll see I have a lot of quality acts on there. Mm that they can choose from if they want to book them for a show or if they want to, you know, uh, okay. use their music or however, you know, it, it can come through me with some of them because some, some of them are, are members, you know. So you, so you, you really branched out from um, being a music station into being a entertainment and music promoter, really, because you're, promoting, you're, you're taking bands and help promote them. Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm actually, uh, how can I say it, man? It's it's really I'm not a record label. I don't want to be. Yeah. You know, I don't <laughs> want to be a record label, and I really don't want to manage acts. Yeah. You know, that's a headache, man. That's a true headache. So what? That's why I give them the opportunity to let me put you in my network, and if my audience, if my audience uh, like you, I mean, I'll put you in a store, and if they want to download from me, uh, they can download your music from me. Right. You know? And you have a place where you can sell it. You have a place that can advertise for you. You have a place that you can store, you know, your your image, you know, and uh, and, and and if people uh, click on it, because most of the people I I in my analytics uh, stay on my site for at least uh, 15, 20 minutes at the most, That's because cool. I have a lot of interesting things on it that yeah. you know in in the, in the music industry that they might you know be interested in, sure. you know, from, uh, and then a lot of uh, up-to-date activities, what's going on in the music industry, period, you know, with other different companies like BMI, ASCAP, how to copyright your music, how to trademark your music, you know, different, different teaching tools. Jesus. Right, right. So it's an education as well as a place to find music. Yes, yes. That's really, that's that really interesting because, I, you know, I'm, I'm I'm non-musical. I love music, but I'm non-musical myself. And but I imagine in the fragments that we talk fragmented marketplace today, it's really difficult to get yourself heard um, in order for you to become famous. Which I suppose is why bands from American Idol and The Voice always seem to do so well because they get in front of a national audience. That's but, it. That's yeah. it. That's yeah. it. So for uh, the local bands and um, and the club owners around the country that may see them on that show, uh, yeah. may say, "Hey, I need you to come to my spot or venue." Yeah. You know, they, that's that's how they keep their business moving. Uh, right. You know, but uh, it's that's that's the help that we try to give. You know, to the new system of things because it ain't like it used to be. Right. You know, we used to have a go to a concert tickets ain't for seven dollars. Yeah. Now tickets are seventy five dollars. <laughs> so it's a, but you're getting the same amount of time on a show. You're getting the same kind of show, but the, just the price didn't went up. The value didn't went up. The, the, the prices didn't went up, you know, between a headline artist and a support artist or an opening act, yeah. you know, the prices are changing now. So, but yeah. a lot of them too, this is what a kicker me. A lot of them want to do track dates with just the, you know, I used to do that in front of my mom and dad and them uh, back in the day when I was a kid, same with the music, you know, uh, you know, in the living room during the holidays and we all singing and to the, what we play on the record player, right, yeah. you know, and that's, they doing it now with a CD and call it a track show. I can't believe it, but that's uh, 
what goes around comes around now. Yeah, ain't it? It's weird. Yeah. It's really we'll all be wearing bell bottoms again soon. But what actually, I mean, I understand that you are an editor or I guess a writer of a column or something that you do uh, that presents. How do people, how do you, what made you interested in what I do? Um, I just, when, when, when I'm on LinkedIn, I'm looking for people who do interesting things that are outside the mainstream. Oh, well, you pick one. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like um, I like talking to people like yourself because you do something that's unique and something that's of value to the the community. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I bring people together now. <laughs> yeah, and exactly, and and things like that should be supported. Um, I always believe that supporting local businesses. I, I try and buy lo everything local and not online. And I try to, uh, with, I, I, I used to help people with their um, business owners with their websites and their social media. You know, again, you know, they, they, they opened up a dry cleaning store with the idea of making money and being a good dry cleaner. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean to say they know anything about doing social media and um, websites, but you have right. to have those right. in order to compete. So. Um, I spent some time working with um, local businesses and helping them do that. Um, but I, I just love finding the uniqueness and, you know, Memphis is, you know, it depends on who you talk to, but it's either, it's, it's people decry the city, but I think it's so full of fascinating people like yourself. Um, I talked to a yeah, Well, you know, it's the reason why most of us stay behind the scenes yep. and stay out of the, try to stay out of the limelight because, it's so easy to get damaged yep. by society. Yeah. You know, and and when people don't believe what you believe and you're doing something different, you end up having copycats. Right. And and, uh, and and that's what I find in myself. People go come around me in the music industry and I teach them a few things and then they go off on their own to try to copy what i do yes so you know what i'm saying i do but i do it's like uh well maybe i'm glad i taught you something maybe that, you know i hope it helped you yeah but, well you know business coaching is very similar I'm gonna say but, it, but it's but, like it's competition yeah yeah i mean business coaching is um you know what one of the things i have to overcome is legitimacy because there has been so many people that say they're a business coach they take money off people and give nothing in return and you know so there's a reluctance um to for people to talk about wanting a business coach because they've heard so many horror stories that's one of the reasons i open with the fact that this is a worldwide business and it's not just me i have a thousand coaches around the world that i can call on um to help me if i need if i have a, need a question answering and we have facebook groups that answer questions every day for coaches all over the world that are dealing with situations and so you know it, it's it, as, as you said you know people are all, always willing to rip you off take a bit of the knowledge and think they can do it and set it up um but i, I just i just love talking to people like yourself i talked to a young gentleman a couple of weeks ago who was in the process of creating a go-kart track that's based off uh, Mario Kart video game and it's going to operate in real life just like it does in the video game and you know this guy is 30 years old he's here in Memphis and he's been working on this for seven years and stories like that you don't get to hear about much because the local news doesn't have time for that well there's guys like that that I would like to hook up with because they need a voice for their product, I yep. mean, they need someone to that can at least give some other type of excitement or promotion for their products. And, yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. And if they got new products, they need a EPK, electronic press kit, to go with it. Yeah. You know, they need something to advertise it. They need a means of, uh, and that's some of the things that I try to. That's my main source of income. Yeah. Of income with my business is doing the voiceover, doing the commercials, doing that. And doing an ad for you, yeah. what you do. <laughs> you exactly. Know? Yeah. So yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's that's the whole idea. We write a script. I sit here and we we I record the script in the studio and drop it on you if you like it. You know, you give me all the detailed information about what you do and how you do what you do. 
yeah. and put a, put together a documentary, you know, demonstration of it, or however you want to lay it out. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, I can help you, help you, and yeah. help me. <laughs> so. That's again, that's another great thing right here. So many connections <laughs> to people, you know, you know, that can help you in the future when uh, and start doing the advertising later on this year. Those are the sort of things that you know you. You took away and you go okay i can contact oscar and he can do me a voiceover ad for um, what i want to be doing i think it's, it is and, and it's you know this this whole this whole newsletter thing is sort of a, just a sideline to my to my business but uh -huh. I, I just i just find it fascinating fascinating you know and there's a whole new industry around the country that's helped helps older people transition from their houses into senior living facilities and it helps them dispose of items that they no longer want or need. Right. Um, and you know, it's like, well, whoever knew that was that, that's a great thing about, about the United States. There's just so many businesses and so many opportunities, and everybody deserves the chance to be successful. And mm -hmm. if doing these interviews and posting them out there helps a couple of people make connections. So the, the guy with the go karts, I'm going to connect with a guy I talked to this morning who's starting up a um, capital fund to help people with ideas who can't get regular financing. And so uh, if I can connect those two guys together and something comes of it, then everything's been worthwhile. And if I can connect right. you with that's people right. um, with, you, with people who are interested in you and what you do, then this whole series is a success. And, that's, and that's the only thing that's in it for it. It's not like some money made for me because it's not like that. But uh, it's all about giving back and having conversations and learning about what's available and not sticking in one lane. You know, I just think it's great. And um, you know, maybe one day you'll come across somebody who needs a business coach and you'll go, I remember a guy I talked to. Um, exactly. exactly. But that would, just be, that would be a nice, pro a nice product of these, but it's not the main intention, you know, so. I just love hearing about but i would like to continue our 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 discussion i mean i yeah. i like to like to meet again and keep these motivated talks uh, yeah absolutely over, you know because uh, everyone needs that man i tell you <laughs> i ain't gonna jive you man what they you do. said man I, everyone needs that man. well that's great well I, i'll reach out through linkedin and maybe we can just meet up in person one day and have coffee or something and, yeah because you're here in memphis right yeah, I am. I live over in Colville, so. Um, okay, well, you're not too far from me. I'm mile in East. I'm in Germantown, right, right, right down the street from me there. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. I lived in yeah. Germany. I lived at Poplar Pike and Hacks Cross for 25 years. Oh, okay. Well, I'm at Kirby, Kirby Parkway in Night Arnold area. Yeah, okay. That, yeah. Yeah, know that. Yeah, so that'd be great. Let's do that. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah, man, uh, I'd be glad to. Uh, uh, and if it's something that... Uh, you you now in in your coaching mm -hmm. what is the what are your processes of, of of mediating uh your your courses i mean is it a course situation is it a time factor situation is it, is it something that you know you're uh able if i have a discussion maybe of, of uh, saying hey man I, i'm looking for a hedge fund director or hedge fund you know, mm -hmm. person that, that has, uh, I have a uh, movie director in, 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 in LA send me three big movies that he's shooting and with big stars in it. And he's looking for, well, I got a contract with it for $4.5 million. So I'm trying to find money. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, but, those are those. So is, that, is, that, is that something open to you, or is it something that, that you may know someone of that caliber that has that type of effect that uh, maybe, like I said, building a relationship is what, you know, my, my thing right now is what I'm trying to get into. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, but I do have a movie director and a four more five million dollar contract. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but you know that's just the way the things are. You know, you never know who you're talking to. Right? Uh, well, that's exactly right. And as I say, and that's I mean, the, guy, that's, I, the guys I'm I talked to to be so upfront about it. But <laughs> well, the guys I talked to this morning would be somebody I can connect you with. Um, and then I talked to somebody a couple of weeks ago um, who has um, um, 
a similar type thing um, where they match uh, people with money with people who want to uh, or people who want to invest with people who are looking for investment. Um, so I'd be glad to uh, facilitate some connections with that and chat a bit more with you about what you need, and then maybe well, I, I mean, can make uh, those connections. Uh, my yeah. my situation is really uh, up front, on top of the table, no hiding, no nothing. Whatever you need, whatever paperwork, whatever information, whatever whatever <laughs> I got it all. Yeah, you know I I got everything. So right. Well, in fact, I'll just um, put uh, some possible dates in the um, LinkedIn and you and I can connect through that and let's see if we can meet up next week or the week after. Let's do that. Sounds good. Let's do that. Let's hey, do that. I, I appreciate your time today, Oscar. It was a pleasure talking to you.